Good evening. Thank you so much for coming. If you just were here to get an er uh, early, to get a good seat, that's great. But you're in for a treat because you get to meet the composer uh, that is visiting us from Minnesota today. Um, I'm, and in, in case you don't know who I am, I'm Nan Washburn. And um, I'm the music director and conductor of the Michigan Philharmonic. And we are very, very excited about this concert. It's one that I've wanted to do for at least five years. The piece uh, that Libby Larson wrote, that, and we'll meet her in just a minute, um, is a piece I've known about for many years. I mean, like 30 years or something like that. And I love the piece and have wanted to play it. And it's, it's a challenging work. And it has lots of parts, including we have an 80-voice choir that's a, com a combination of three choirs and then uh, three soloists just on that piece. And so it's been a great uh, challenge to put together, but we're very, very excited about the outcome. And that really was the cornerstone of the, the putting the program together. That piece is called In a Winter Garden, and we thought this would be a very, a, a very cool way to, uh, to title the, the concert as well. Um, many of you may know that we do our holiday pops, uh, and that actually we rehearse this week. Um, but this is a very different um, kind of uh, reflection on um, the time of year, um, mostly in Advent, pre-celebratory. Um, and this is a concert that is a smaller orchestra, even though it looks like a little bit bigger orchestra. First on the program is uh, a work by Vaughn Williams. Um, if you look in the program, it looks like Ralph, but he liked it pronounced Rafe, Vaughn Williams. And uh, he's an English composer, did lots and lots of wonderful folk music uh, collections. He wrote lots of other kinds of music too, but he collected a lot of English folk songs. Um, the opening uh, piece is a collection of English Christmas carols, and it's very nicely arranged, and we are featuring our uh, middle-level youth orchestra, the Sinfonia from the Michigan Philharmonic Youth Orchestra. And so you'll see some wonderful young musicians that will be joining us for the first piece. That's why it looks very large. And then we'll scale back down and be featuring our, um, uh, just our string section and our harpsichord over here for the uh, our. our Cangelo uh, Corelli um, Christmas Concerto. And it's a Concerto Grosso, which means it's one of those things, uh, they wrote a lot of those in Baroque times. It's a um, work for a str usually a string orchestra um, that features some players. And in this case, we feature two violins and cello that have extra solos in that part. And then the, the, uh, the rest of the strings play all together as well. This has, is in six movements, um, uh, various uh, fast, slow, beautiful, beautiful Baroque piece. I, I will, do want to tell you that the uh, fifth movement runs right into the sixth movement, so don't be fooled. But you'll know you arrived at the sixth movement when you hear something that sounds like drones of bagpipes. And that's the pastoral, which is uh, probably the most famous movement of that um, Christmas concerto. Um, following that is a very special piece by a composer that you may not know. Um, if you've come to our concerts before, you might have seen her name a few times, Lily Boulanger. Uh, she was the younger sister of Nadia Boulanger, who was uh, the famous uh, music teacher of Aaron Copeland, Quincy Jones, you name it, in terms of uh, especially um, a certain generation of American composers. But Lily Boulanger did not live very long, if you look at the dates on, on the program. Um, she won a major, major prize, the Prix de Rome, when she, I think, was only 19. I think she died when she was 23. This is a piece, um, Pie Jesu, for uh, many of you may know that that's often part of a Requiem Mass. It's speculated that perhaps she was going to write a Requiem Mass, but she did not live that long. This was one of the last pieces that she wrote um, and it had actually had to be dictated to her sister, um, and so she didn't write it in her own hand. Her sister had to write it down for her. But it's a beautiful, haunting piece for soprano. We have um, Catherine Davis um, uh, singing the soprano part with uh, harp and organ. You get to hear the organ and um, strings. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. And then um, finishing off the uh, first half of the program is another piece by Rafe Von Williams um, called Green Sleeves. And I bet you probably heard that piece before. Uh, it, it's again another folk song that he has adapted in a beautiful string arrangement with strings, uh, two woodwinds, and uh, harp. 
And that closes out our first half. And then we get to have the Inner Winter Garden, which is a multi-level uh, piece. It's, it's kind of a mini opera. We're going to have some characters over here in costume. And we are going to have about 80 voices of the choir here. And here to tell us all about it is the one and only Libby Larson. So Libby and I go way back. We, we, we don't have to tell them exactly how long we've known each other, but a very long time. Long. Long time. And I, I love doing her music, and it's even more fun when she can visit us. And I think this is your third trip. It is. To, Happily so. Uh, yes. Third I think, time. Though it's, I think, a fourth or fifth time we've played your music. You haven't been able to make it every time. I wish I could. But we are so glad that she's here. <laughs> she lives in Minnesota, and um, we welcomed her with some nice weather. We're very happy about that. So tell us about the story, the piece, how it came about in a winter garden. This is a piece that, um, that I wrote with a very dear friend of mine, a, a very fine writer by the name of Patricia Hample. She's actually a MacArthur genius. Mm, scary. But um, uh, Patricia and I, years ago, really in the early 1980s, um, we had, uh, this was our first uh, time working together. We this was the first? very first thing we did together. We uh, wrote an opera after that and then some other things after that. But um, we were asked by a music organization in Minneapolis, a group called Vocal Essence, uh, uh, if we would create a piece for their large choir and, and their orchestra, and if we would create a piece that could be done at the Christmas season. So it was specific to this? Yes, for the Christmas, Christmas season. And um, Patricia and I um, are, are, were both uh, raised uh, in the Catholic Church. Uh, uh, and we connected there, um, thinking, uh, and we began to think about how worried um, we were at that time about um, ecological issues. We were worried that uh, uh, that human beings might be messing up with the weather. This was in 1982. Yeah, right. in 1982, uh, 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 and um, uh, and we thought, well, we're artists. You know, wh what can we, what can we as artists make? You know, uh, that that could. Um, that could address the question of deep worry and also faith. You know, faith in human beings and deep worry about the capacity for, <clears throat> uh, for human beings to mess up. <laughs> and, uh, so um, we, um, we uh, both uh, felt, and, and I do feel, that um, uh, although we celebrate Christmas, uh, 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 my favorite part of the, of the season is Advent. Uh, which is uh, a time of quiet reflection, of uh, uh, internal preparation for the coming, whatever that coming is, uh, it's symbolized by, of course, the coming of, of the baby, baby Jesus. But really, it's an ancient ritual to, um, to uh, as the sun goes, uh, uh, darkens to the solstice, uh, for it also to be a time for human beings uh, to take advantage of the dark and the quiet to go inside and, and make a trip. So um, a trip inward. Uh, so um, so uh, with that combined with our concern about, uh, about the environment, we, um, we decided that what we would like to do um, is to explore the notion of worry and faith uh, um, by setting a piece in a convent. Uh, the convent uh, is, is what you see on stage here. Uh, you'll just have to imagine it. Uh, uh, and um, the two characters are the, the, um, the abbess, uh, the mother superior, and she is worried. She's deeply, deeply worried. And her longtime uh, friend, uh, the gardener in the convent, Thomas. And Thomas and, uh, and, uh, and sister um, engage in a dialogue without actually talking to each other. <laughs> no. um, one about worry, the other about I just plant my bulbs every fall, and my faith is in the winter. Uh, I know the flowers are there and that they will, they will come back. Uh, and so we have an exploration of, um, of the, of the um, really, I think, something we northerners know quite a bit about, which is the faith of winter, uh, uh, that we, the leaves go. Uh, the grass browns, uh, the lakes freeze, uh, our, our, our waterfowl fly south, you know, um, and, and we get to experience each, each winter uh, uh, this very same thing, that we know, we know 
that spring will come back. And yet, I don't know about you, but me, I, at the, usually the end of January, beginning of February, I have a moments of doubt. No, I, <laughs> and she's, she's from the Midwest. I'm from California. Just remember that. <laughs> and so, so, so Patricia and I thought maybe we could create an Advent piece that, that is an Advent piece for our times. You know, the, the times that, that we live in when we are going on the journey inward to recognize our own faith, uh, the faith uh, a faith in the future and faith in renewal. Does that make sense to everybody? Well, and I think it's really interesting how you've done it because it, you said it in a convent, it's within this context, but what you're saying is very universal. I mean, you don't have to be Catholic to understand the, what, what you're saying, which is faith, faith and renewal. Faith and, and renewal, yes. we will get through the winter. Yes, yes, that we will get through the winter, whatever that winter is, you know, uh, at, at whatever time we, we're on earth. Uh, we all have our, our seasons of winter in many, many ways, and luckily we all have our seasons of spring, too. Would you say that, um, I've been thinking that uh, there's um, those two characters, and then you have another soprano soloist, that is almost like a little Greek chorus, uh, as is the chorus, com commenting a little bit. Maybe you could. Yes, um, uh, um, with our two rather rather operatic characters, I would say we have a, 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 an eighty voice chorus who who really act as us. No, uh, those of us, a Greek chorus, saying, uh, uh, confirming and um, and uh, uh, and rejoicing, uh, and and in one particular moment, there is a, a, a carol that uh, Patricia Hampel constructed. It's just a beautiful carol, um, the, um, which which uses ice uh, as a prayer. She says, "Ice is a prayer full of light, full of the sun caught in mid-flight." Even in winter, there's wonder. Uh, just by contemplating light through ice, um, and so th the, that comes from the chorus, uh, uh, and and from a soloist in the chorus, um, telling us that that everywhere, at every time, there there is always beauty uh, um, awaiting us if we just stand still uh, and contemplate what's right there in front of us. So. Um I've known Libby for a very long time, and I've uh, done a lot of instrumental music, but you really are practically a rock star in, in uh, you know, <laughs> vocal music and in choral music. You do a lot. I do. And, and I was, in just reading the libretto, which uh, Patricia wrote, it's interesting how you choose to repeat certain um, words and phrases, and I mean, how do you make those choices in your music? <laughs> Well, you know, it, um, there's, uh, there's some mystery <laughs> in, in composition uh, in, in many of the movies that we see, maybe about the life of Mozart or, or you know, what have you. There are moments where the camera zooms in on, your, on, on the face of whoever's playing Mozart. And a light bulb goes yeah. like, gee, you know, <laughs> and suddenly you hear a symphony. But, um, but actually, that, it is kind of that way, although not that cinematic. So, for instance, there is, a, 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 um, you were talking about repeating. Um, Patricia gave me one line, no, two words actually, uh, and the words are no voice, <laughs> no voice, which doesn't sound like happy birthday to me, you know, <laughs> when, I, when I put music with it. But I decided um, that, um, that I would use those two words and repeat them in, in little fragments in the chorus, uh, and uh, and in Thomas and in the and uh, and in Sister, um, it, just saying no voice, no voice, no voice, which is I think um, why did I do that? I, um, why did you do that? that? That's a good question. Um, uh, it, uh, because um, because at times of, of frustration, um, uh, th there are times. Um, when I feel like I have no voice, you know, when, when something big is going on and I feel like I have no voice in it, uh, um, uh, I think that's also a human thing. That when things seem overwhelming, uh, uh, that you feel as if you have no voice, but then if you, if, um, it can become a, a, repeating can become a kind of a comfort and kind of a mantra. And, um, and so I thought, if I have the choir saying, no voice, and somebody else, no voice, no voice, no voice, suddenly there are voices. 
you know, uh, 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 and that, be that is, becomes an act of communal faith. But you also use that technique a little bit in, in just the orchestration, like the bell clusters. Oh, yes. They're not on stage yet, they will be over, they're over here. But they're that's hiding. like a little uh, <laughs> character all itself, ding, ding. Yes. Yeah, as is uh, the harp. Yes, uh, I use harp. Pleasure. Yep, harp and bells. Well, you know, um, uh, 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 we, have, we all have brains, uh, and, um, uh, and I'm a composer, and, and whatever I put in the air is gone before you even hear it, yeah, if, if you think about it. You know, music actually doesn't exist all in one line hanging in the air for you. You have to hear it, remember it, and also think about what might come. Repetition is, uh, is, is one of the great tools of, of memory. Um, and, so if, um, and so I used in this piece uh, bells, just little ting ting bells, and a, and a little harp going ding ding ding, which is um, uh, in, in a very hmm, scientific way, it triggers, it triggers our memory. Uh, uh, and, um, and in another way, it helps, it helps all of us feel like that, that we're actually in this house of constructed sound that actually isn't even there. <laughs> Does that make sense? Also, you also use it thematically, you yes. know, when you're recalling, when the characters are recalling certain things, those instruments reappear. Like the harp has one chord that he plays over and over again every time Sister, Sister is, yes. is really down in the dumps. Yes. Ooh. I hear that chord in the harp, and then she sings yes. about how depressed she is. Yes. But she gets better in the end. Don't worry. Do we have a quick question from anybody? Yes, sir. He's asking which is her favorite form of music, concerto, symphony, opera. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I write in all the forms, uh, <clears throat> and um, uh, <clears throat> my f favorite. Hmm, it, you know, it, it, uh, this is going to sound like a lawyer, and I'm married to a lawyer, so I learned to answer by not answering. But, <laughs> but um, uh, so I'll, I'll start by saying it depends on the piece. But um, uh, my favorite form is to take a form that we feel we might know, like a fugue yeah, or sonata allegro. Um, and then, like, um, very much like a contemporary architect, change it so that you recognize it for what it is, but you recognize it as something fresh and new. Yeah, that's where, that's where the great joy in my art comes. No. And it also, I think, is always the, kind of the next piece. She was scouting out our percussionist setup because she's already scouting out her next piece in her head. But we're <laughs> going to have to stop because our musicians are going to need to come on stage. But please uh, feel free to ask Libby questions after the concert, and we hope you enjoy it. Thank, Thank you, Libby. Thanks, man.